Over two years ago, Afei came to this inland city, shrouded in fog and haze, after being recommended by a friend and interviewed by CEO Mr. One. He was appointed as the head of the IT department of Company C. However, as soon as he landed, he discovered that Company C, tucked away in a third-tier city, was brimming with world-conquering ambition and concealed many secrets unknown to outsiders. He was quickly escorted by a mentor from the airport to this secretive base. The company rented the 11th and 12th floors of a 17-story oval-shaped building. Most of the offices were empty, with only a few lights on. In one corner, several factory engineers were discussing design plans. In another room, the early arrivals, experts in photolithography and integration, chatted leisurely. Apart from them, a few more employees were gradually checking in. The current headcount was just over a dozen. Yet their ambition was clear, starting from scratch, they aimed to capture 10% of the global market share for their key product in a few years. After settling down at the hotel known as the Dragon Gate Inn and sorting out his living arrangements, Afei proceeded with a medical checkup, applied for a mobile number, and set up a bank account. Everything was ready, and the next day he boarded the company bus to work. No sooner had he taken his seat than an attendant came to inform him that senior vice president, Sir Long, wanted to speak with him. Sir Long was short in stature, with kind and benevolent eyes. Though his hair was graying, he exuded youthful vitality. He spoke to Afei in a calm but serious tone, elaborating on the company's current situation and challenges. On the surface, we're recruiting the best talent worldwide to develop a groundbreaking product. But the reality is far more complex, he began. Many who have joined us brought secrets from their previous companies, negotiating with us for the best terms, in exchange for the highest benefits and a promising future. A good number of them might face lawsuits or even be labeled as fugitives. Consequently, these people are not only audacious, but often have ulterior motives. Sir Long looked around before continuing in a hushed voice, some who come here to negotiate, if they can't reach an agreement, turn to our upstream competitor, Company Y. The problem is, the production process for this product is incredibly intricate. Missing even a single step would mean the prototype wouldn't pass the testing phase. In other words, in the beginning, we have no choice but to acquiesce to their demands, at least until the product prototype is successfully developed. Moreover, some are moles sent by their parent companies or our competitors. While they pretend to join our ranks, they're actually sending back intel. Once they've gathered enough, they might accuse us, either individually or as a company. We can't identify these people based solely on appearances. There's also a group of opportunists, lured by our high salaries. However, they lack faith in our future. At the slightest hint of trouble, they'll bolt, potentially taking with them the secrets developed by others. Furthermore, we have international teams here, each working on their product lines. Not only do they compete with each other, but they're also very covetous of others' technologies. They might exploit meetings or collaborations to extract secrets from their peers. Finally, Sir Long sighed, in a nutshell, there's a lack of trust everywhere, employees don't trust the company, companies don't trust each other, and employees don't trust their colleagues. The only glue holding everyone together is money. Under such circumstances, to succeed, we must closely monitor every engineer. We must be alert at all times. Before the product is launched, we can't afford even a minor security breach.